I'm really excited to see vision-based, cameras, ultrasonic, GPS, laser. Everybody is taking a different approach. I'd like to thank our sponsors, U.S. Bank, Honeywell, Alliant Tech Systems, Lockheed Martin, Astrolabs, and HP Motorsports for all of their support. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to have this happen. Well, one of the missions of the Institute of Navigation is to help prepare the next generation of navigators. And competitions such as this offer um, engineering students the opportunity to work in a real-life situation solving real-world problems, and they get to work with professional engineering mentors. So these are students that uh, technically are very, very capable. Uh, academically and normally are at the high, uh, high end of their class. They're also, I don't want to call them overachievers, but high achievers because many of them are doing it as a volunteer effort. They don't necessarily even get credit for it. So we know they're motivated, they can do hardware development, software development, and, and team building. And it's not just uh, Honeywell, but there are other companies here as well. Lockheed's here, ATK's here, Goodrich is here. So, you know, there are a number of us locally who are here. And certainly we look at this as uh, not only uh, an, I, uh, an opportunity to identify students, but it gives them a lot of practical experience that really rounds out their education. And it, it's things like that that we look for when we hire. In fact, the, uh, the rocket that I'm working on right now, it's a GPS guided rocket. So, you know, GPS and guidance technologies is, is very critical to the business that we do. It's very valuable for us as a company to be able to work with young people and see, you know, their thoughts and their feelings and then also, if we find some good ones, we just hire them up. <laughs> Honeywell is a big navigation company and controls company. And robotics requires navigation, guidance, and control. So that's the big fortes of Honeywell. So that's really a driver for that. And we, of course, are always looking for people that are talented in those areas. And so we like to sponsor these kinds of events to get the student involvement. It teaches you things that you can't be taught in a classroom. But when it comes to working with a team, communications, leadership. Yesterday was just one straight line. We can do one straight line for a while now, but to make two turns, all of our sensors, and the way we're measuring the headings, we have inertial sensor on it, we have GPS on it, and one of our inertial sensors calibration program all of a sudden quit working yesterday, and we couldn't use it. We have come up with an alternative yesterday. I think it's just a great way to bring a lot of people together, established professionals and students. So I think it's a great mesh of minds, scientific minds, which I am not one of. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick test without running. Ready? Yeah, unplug the monitor. Go ahead. Yeah, mouse. We'll, we'll oh, get it. So He's healed coming. Kill. Connect the monitor. Connect the monitor.
stay away from the laser. Ground speed. Oh, six centimeters per second. Almost close to the speed of sound. And the battery's on top of even the laser. So our, ve our vehicle stopped a little and short of the end. Yeah. If we restart or we continue, or if we restart from here or from the front, we lose 10%, right? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Stop. What do you guys think? Same. Same? Same. Okay. We're good. We're good? Yeah. We're done. We're done. Okay, they decided. <laughs> Kill it. We had a lot of fun. We learned a lot of things during this competition, how to work with the laser scanner, how to program in different software languages, and then how to deal with the safety parts and then how to deal with failure uh, modes. I worked more on the programming part, uh, getting the software to communicate with the motors and testing that out. And we had another member who was better at then interfacing between the sensors and the, the motors. It's fun. It's fun. And teamwork. We, we spent a lot of time. Teamwork was probably one of the most important parts. So we see Sensor development, that's an important factor. Miniaturization, uh, reducing the cost, going into automobiles, uh, uh, types of vehicles around your house like lawnmowers, snow plows, things like that, that eventually will um, provide capabilities that we don't have today. Because you've hit a boundary, you can move it to the most previous plowed area and then go from there or anyone previous. So you can come all the way to the start. That encoder got all messed up and so then it didn't think it was moving anywhere so it gave it a bunch of throttle. At least we didn't get stuck. You're, you're tweaking it in the, in the process while you're going, so that's always fun and exciting, and I enjoy that part of engineering. I always feel that if you're not making mistakes, you're not learning anything, so I'm, I'm sure they're learning an awful lot today. So you didn't hit the boundary, so you won't get a fraction there. You're, are you stopped it, you could say you're done for the day, no, or no. <laughs> good, no, no. <laughs> or you can move, you can move it all the way back for a restart. A full restart. I might agree with you guys that you could keep this angle, but go that way a little. It's a real-world application um, where they've applied machining skills, electronic skills, electrical skills, design skills, and, and a lot of fun. That's what makes learning fun for these guys, is actually to see a finished product. Our encoders on those wheels kind of pick up vibrations too, so it's making it hard to make the tractor very accurate right now. You know, it's our first year and we came out here to compete and that's what we're doing. We might even eventually get into a snow blower contest where we actually bring the snow in and shoot it possibly into a goal box for some uh, fun activities for people to see and to score differently um, and move on to other things. Uh, some groups have even said we could go onto an ice rink and do automated Zambonis so that would clear an ice rink for example. speed because uh, for some reason last night our one our right motor spinning a lot quicker than our left one I think the one motor might be burned out what if we kick these cones to the side 
and start lined up with that and it's gonna have to go to the right? What do you think? Really, our system's relying solely on statistics. And uh, we just sample what the snow looks like and we just take pictures and statistically analyze is that snow or not. So I'm just trying to take everything I learn in the class and you know apply it to something that makes sense and um, actually see it in action, really. This has been a good uh, experience. I, I, I'm a computer engineering student, so I gotta learn both electrical and uh, computer science kind of things. So this has been a good way for me to integrate. So if we can solve this problem of moving snow, totally robotic, think what we could do for future automobiles or transport or anything else like that. You learn so much more out of the classroom than you would in the classroom, just to be hands-on. Originally we were putting it together just to get the platform working over the summer for a senior design group, but then pretty early on in the summer they decided they wanted to compete in this competition, um, and that's when we got the whole team together. So. Right now it's a snow plow, we've done a lawn mower before, so we're working on a search and rescue robot. And they're basically turning it into a pack mule where it kind of, it, you tell it to follow a target and it'll follow a target and go the same path they go and so you can load it up with uh, whatever you want and it'll just follow you around. Clearly the students got a lot of exposure also to potential employers and that's also a nice feature and, and get some real world experience in doing engineering under pressure. It cost us a lot, a lot of late nights and uh, but it's definitely worth it. And, and the really nice part about this competition is that the judges have been extremely helpful and constructive and it's, it's really just like being an industry for them uh, to have to answer to, to the questions that are being asked of them and, and do the resi design iterations. I don't think there's a substitute for actually being here and making it work. It's quite exciting and uh, quite nerve-wracking as well once in a while. On Thursday, the students had to do student presentations to a board of eight different judges from our sponsors, and they were quizzed quite vigorously as to how they designed their vehicles. One team received the Best Presentation Award. Ohio University wins $500 of Best Presentation. In third place, and winning $500, is... Dunwoody College of Technology! We're going to have our Czech girl and our bronze snow globe award. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Shake that bronze snowball. Well, second place and winning the silver snow globe, along with the check for $1,500, is Miami University of Ohio! First place with a machine called Max. That would be Ohio University winning $2,500 and the Golden Snow Globe. <laughs> Ohio University is going home with $3,000 total. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We'll see you next year. Start planning now.